Alright people, welcome back. Another episode of Fake Card Friday. So, like usual, people try to create their balanced version of Pot of Greed. You know, how can we have a Pot of Greed where you go ahead and go plus one, just so good, but still have it balanced? And in my opinion, I seriously think that Konami has it perfectly fine with Card Card D. I really do. I mean, you want to go ahead and go plus one like that? You want to go ahead and just use one and draw two? Then we're going to need to put some restrictions in. I think that Card Card D is like one of the best restrictions and probably one of the most balanced versions of Pot of Greed that you can ask for. I don't think anybody has ever complained and said, you know what, Card Card D is stupid. I don't think anybody's ever said that. Now, what you do with Card Card D in particular decks, such as Burn or Exodia, I mean, that can't be controlled, you know. If they want to go ahead and put in Exodia, then it's just not like there's a restriction on Card Card D that says this cannot be played in Saki decks. But is it really Card Card D's fault? No. Because, I mean, they're really not doing much anymore. It's, you know, they can't special summon, they're not coming out of you, the battle phase, their turn immediately ends. I mean, they really can't even utilize those two cards that they draw until the next turn at minimum. So, definitely I feel like Card Card D is the balanced version, but people are just going to keep on trying. So, as long as people keep on trying to make supposedly balanced versions of Pot of Greed, I will continue to look at them and determine whether they are balanced or not. So, once again, today we are looking at another Pot of Greed S card. This is Memory Card. Uh, you see on the artwork there, they kind of have like a copyright, Bushi Road, all rights reserved, like, I mean, I get it. When it comes to making a fake card, you know, you don't know where to get the art. You probably just Google searched, you know, memory card just popped up and you just slapped it in there. But, you know, you could at least put the time and effort to go ahead and just take out that uh, copyright in your art. It looks very unprofessional as if, you know... Yu-Gi-Oh! and Kazuki Takahashi is going to be like, oh, well, we're just going to go ahead and take this image and slap it in this Yu-Gi-Oh! card. Oh, what? We don't own the image? We didn't create it? Oh, well. You know? And I say, sometimes images are just like, eh, what is this? And sometimes you're like, oh my god, like, is this a Yu-Gi-Oh! card? But, you know, the image isn't bad. It's just, it's just kind of lazy. Anyway, memory card is a normal spell card that reads, activate only during your main phase one. Okay, well, I mean, that's not really a restriction. I mean, Activating during the main phase one, majority of shit goes down during the main phase one, you know. So to put that restriction is like, mm, you know, like, oh, what? I can only activate it in the phase before I uh, go to my battle phase to do damage to you and get set up. Oh, wow. It's, you know, it's like, oh, you want to play during your main phase two after you conducted your battle phase? You know, then, oh, you can't do that. So it's kind of meh, you know. With card card D, your turn immediately ends. So not only can you not special summon, you use your normal summon, you're attributing your card card D to our one to draw two, but your turn immediately ends. So your opponent doesn't have to worry about your special summoning, nor, you know, conducting the battle phase. This on the other hand, yeah, you can play it during your main you can only play it during your main phase one. So not only can your opponent continue to do plays, because I'm a finish reading the card, but uh yeah, they can still conduct the battle phase. I look at play during your main phase one. Banish two cards from your graveyard, face down. Then draw two cards. Yeah. So, banish two cards from your graveyard, face down, semicolon. Draw two cards, uh, semicolon, that's when you respond. So, for example, if you're playing, like, you know, Infernoids, your opponent activates this card, only has two cards from the graveyard, you go, alright, I'm going to use my Infernoid effect, tribute, banish, this card with Fizzle, of course. So, that's, meh. But, I mean, is that really a cost? Is that really a cost? Not really. I mean, think about it. All you literally have to do, and it's, it's not even like banish two monsters and you won't have access to monsters, just banish two cards. I could literally just have just two dead spell or trap cards that I don't plan on using for the rest of the duel, banish those, and then plus. Like, it's not balanced at all. And, you know, you know, the whole, like, oh, well, they're face down, so you really won't have access to them for the rest of the duel. You know, if they're monsters and you banish them when they face up, for example, if you banish... You know, some dragon rulers, and you know, some dragon rulers to get that effect, but you know, we banish them face down so you don't have access to them for the rest of the duel. It's so balanced, like, no, no. Because you play this, you banish two random cards, just any two random cards that you don't care about anymore, and then draw two. So, essentially, it's just bad early game unless you're, you know, set up. So, you know, unless you absolutely just draw this early game and you do not have two cards in the graveyard nor any way to get two cards in the graveyard and it's essentially a dead draw early game but late game it's a pot of greed essentially then it's two random cards face down draw two cards like mm. during the turn you have to discard you cannot add a other cards effects that would add cards from your deck to your hand all right so it's their way of preventing some sackiness so 
you know, similar to how Karkar D just ends your turn so you can't do any additional things, uh, this pretty much just says, hey, you know, you're not allowed to uh, uh, add cards from Vector Hand for the rest of the turn, so you can't just play this and then, oh, you draw into two search cards and you can play that, or you can play Upstart and you can just keep on drawing and drawing. Draw. It pretty much prevents Zeki that from continuing to do drawing plays uh, after playing this card, but, you know, it's still a busted pot of greed. I mean, I won't always be, you know, activating cards that allows me to add cards from my deck to my hand, so instead I'm just going to go ahead and pot of greed. Like, how, how fair is that? How fair is that? And I guess it's to prevent you from activating additional ones, so you can't just go, alright, memory card banish to draw to, memory card banish to draw to, memory card banish to draw to, but it'd still just be banned, you know? And like I said, it, you tried to make a balanced version of pot of grief, yet it's still a busted version of pot of grief. And I know people are like, oh man, I wish we had Pot of Greed, it's a fair card, no, 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 shut up, no, it's not, it's busted, it's always been busted, it's busted. So, they went ahead and banned it, and instead of, you know, before they started doing the whole errata, alright, you can come back, they did their thing that they did before, and created a card that's similar, but a much more balanced version of it, i.e. Car Card D, and Car Card D is a fine card. So, if you guys really want to play a Pot of Greed, just play Car Card D. Just play Car Card D. It's Risk Corsair's Reward. It's a balanced card. No one has ever said, despite you going plus one with it, no one has ever said, all right, Car Card D is so busted it needs to be banned. No one. Not even hit. You can have three Car, three car Card D because the Risk and Reward is balanced. But generally, when I see cards that are trying to be a new pot of greed, they're not balanced. The risk isn't worth the reward, you know? And sometimes it's OP. Sometimes it's a little bit too much. This one's just OP, you know? Like I said, it's just pretty much dead, it, essentially it's dead pretty early game, and uh, you can't spam other cards with it. But is it fair? No. Because if you don't uh, really care about the restrictions, such as, you know, if mid to late game, where, you know, a, definitely a pot of greed would be essential to go two cards deeper into your deck and get a plus one, but so by banishing two random cards, like, if it was monsters, maybe we could talk like, oh man, you, you know... Activate this card, your opponent selects two monsters in your graveyard and then banish them face down. So, you know, you don't have access to them, your opponent gets to choose, then maybe we could talk a little bit more. But you you get to choose the cards, two random cards. All right, uh, upstart draw, upstart draw, <laughs> you know, then memory card, banish those two upstarts. I'm not planning on using them two upstarts, so draw two more. Like, yeah, that, that's that's totally fair. Like, I don't even know where you even came up with that effect. It really doesn't seem like much of anything, but being able to go ahead and go two cards deep into your deck mid-late game, and the only thing is you can't turn you activate this, you can't activate any other card effects that would add cards from your deck to your hand, is kind of mediocre, especially when they're already pushing for, you know, damage, or they already have advantage, being able to go two cards deeper into your deck while you're already up on advantage is just enough to be really good. So tell me what you guys think about this card. So. Uh, I'll be back next Friday to review another card for Fake Card Friday. So thanks for watching, thanks for all of the support, and yeah, see you guys next Friday with another Fake Card to look at. Alright people, thanks for watching.